Okay, on. so we are in the middle of our railroad station building, which was built in 1912, and this is going to be renovated along with um, some beautiful murals that are being done by Kathy Hallam in our restrooms and along the hallway into our office. So this is the railroad station that houses the Chamber Business Office and Visitor Center. We get about 23,000 people a year that come into the center and we send them everywhere. We track every referral, we give um, thousands of business referrals um, in the community. So this is about economic development, this whole project, as well as community development. So we tie that in together because it's good for both residents and visitors. The railroad station, as many of you may know, is by the railroad bridge and by the Cape Cod Canal, which is the largest sea level canal uh, in the world without locks. And we celebrated right here, the Cape Cod Canal celebration about two years ago. So here we are now, fast forward, we applied to the town for community preservation funds. We went through a, a, a process and that money is funded by the state and the town for historic related projects such as this. There are other types of projects that the fund also um, does for the community, but it, in this particular case it had to be historic related. So that's what we're doing, we're bringing this back to 1912 architecture through the help of Anthe Frangiatis, who donated her time. She's an architect in Marion and did a fantastic job. So we coordinated with the Historic Commission and the um, Conserv Community Preservation Committee, which had to approve this. Then this goes to town meeting for approval. So it's certainly transparent about how the money is spent. And we're painting everything here, new lighting, a beautiful handmade desk with a map of the canal region. Um, our floor is going to be brought back to life, which is the original tile floor that was in the building in 1912. And we're going to have all kinds of historic paintings on the wall. So this is so exciting for the town. It's really something that I can wrap my um, arms around, even though I do have a broken arm, <laughs> that uh, we really love to do because it helps everyone. And we really um, are looking forward to it. So we hired Kathy Hallam. Um, who is a town resident, and she donated all her time for this. We paid for supplies and materials, but she is more than an artist. She just has the passion, and she paints with emotion, as you've heard her say, or will hear her say, where she um, has dynamic postcard murals in the restrooms, because you know that when people come visiting here and they have fresh eyes, you want to make sure that you have a good impression, and that's what we plan to do. She's also going to frame historic photos in here, and she's managing that whole project. So we can't wait for this to be, to be done. She's almost done um, in the restrooms, and we know that that's just going to make a dynamic impression. Um, hello, my name is Katherine Hallam. I'm a decorative artisan. Uh, the name of my company is Whimsical Notions. Uh, I pretty much paint anything that stands still long enough to be painted. Um, I do uh, probably 50 different times, uh, types of faux finishing, from trump loy, wood graining, uh, gilding, um, and most of the work that I do is brought to a site. Uh, it's not just a picture that's going to hang on the wall. It, it, it is applied to make things functional in commercial settings, in residential settings, and I also do fine art. I contacted the, um, uh, the group down in Chatham, um, the Fisherman's Alliance, to ask them if we could collaborate and create a fellowship so I could support them. And it's also an avenue for me to meet people who are interested in the nature in my community. So I did that. And these are some of the fish. This is my local fish, local chart series. These are small G clays. The charts are actually about 32 inches by 40 inches. They're quite huge. So I go to Methuen and have the, uh, the fellow there photograph them and print them any size. These will actually be enlarged for the Chamber of Commerce here and dry mounted on a black edged board and hung in this hallway. And um, I originally was attracted to this chart because of its color and then decided, oh, I'm going to paint a bluefin tuna on it because it kind of matches. Well, come to find out, as luck would have it, Stellwagen Bank on this chart is where the fishermen go 
to, uh, to catch the bluefin tuna. And um, so it all just kind of panned out to be a, a good thing. The Fisherman's Alliance supports the oyster fleet, which is a very big thing here on Cape Cod. And in, in our specific region, a lot of people uh, go shell fishing for oysters, scallops, clams. And um, so I produced this one on uh, a chart of Cape Cod Bay uh, with an oyster, just showing the, the, uh, the inner part of the shell that has the color that makes it so attractive, never mind the delicious food inside of it. And then a little bit further down, I have the striped bass. And every fisher person, because women do fish too, has a passion for catching stripers because that is what is available right now in our waters. And so everybody, when they come to Cape Cod, um, and you will see in the men's room, I painted a local fisherman, John Doble, um, with one of his uh, fish that he had caught. You take home with you that snapshot memory of catching your striper on, on the banks of Cape Cod. And there are many areas, the Cape Cod Canal is really popular for catching the striped bass. So I have other fish. Um, and anyway, uh, I work in, I'm associated with Anthe Frangiatis Architect and Associates in Marion, a wonderful group. Um, she promotes artisans in the workplace and how to incorporate them into design so that you are getting a local workforce a local flavor and talent that can be applied in, in a commercial setting like this or in a residential space, as well as her showroom, which is right on Main Street across from their library. Anthe is um, uh, working with Maria Leva and the entire Chamber of Commerce to bring life back to this historical facility. So about a year ago, Marie and um, Quite a few people got involved with Anthe to get the funding to bring you know, the, the, the flavor back without losing the integrity, to not completely modernize it, but to save it so that it will be here in 100 years um, and better. And that's when Anthe brought me on board. She, and they laughingly said to me, the most used part of the chamber besides the visitor center are the restrooms. And people come in and they go, what can you do to make it look better? Because they, they, they needed a facelift. So we came up with an idea. Um, I brainstormed. I presented it to Marie. Anthe gave me the thumbs up. They liked it. And then I had to go to the historical committee in the town of Bourne because they were instrumental in help, helping to get the funding for this. So they, we had a wonderful discussion with Marie. Um, about which designs. I had done the work in the studio pulling out designs that might be a possibility. And they made their choices. And um, so then I had to go to work on my own in the studio, enlarge the designs. And I enlarged the outline of each design, and then I prick holes in it so that when I go to a work site, I can apply it to a wall or a piece of furniture or floor and use charcoal dust and tamp it with a little pouch of muslin, tamp the charcoal through the holes, and it transfers the design for me. So it's really easy for me on the job site. I'm not doing the work of the design. I'm just um, I'm flushing out the design. So that's what we've done. Um, we have uh, um, done both bathrooms. Uh, the idea is snapshot moments that you take home with you when you leave Cape Cod. And there again, it, it brings in the idea of emotion. What do you feel when you come to Cape Cod? And so I was a realist. I realized that men and women have different ideas what their snapshots would be. And uh, Marie was on board with that too. And I think you'll kind of figure that out when you see the pictures in the men's room and the woman's room, what the thought process was. And, and for me, as a child on the beach, I can still hear the seagulls. I remember having my dog on the beach. I can smell peanut butter sandwiches and apples in my memory and the smell of copper tone. If they could just bottle that smell and it wouldn't have to be, you know, 
a sunblock. So uh, that is the whole premise. And then in the visitor center itself, uh, I have an archive of historical photos that were left to me by an uncle. We are going to blow those up. And the historical committee loved that idea. So I will also be using some of their archives to blow up and dry them out and represent our area, kind of where we came from, you know, from Glo Grover, Cleveland, um, the whole idea of the train station, the old time fishermen. Um, I, I believe we even have some of the old uh, fire department and such. So that will be a different kind of decoration that is absolutely, you know, represents where we came from. This is who we are. And that is what we take with us when we do the bathrooms and the, the artwork. And um, so anybody could, you know, visit and get a little piece of Cape Cod to, to bring home with them. So anyway, thank you. Terry Stanley with the Cape Cod Canal Region Chamber of Commerce and I'm so delighted to be able to tell you about some of the conservation preservation we're doing here at the Buzzards Bay Visitor Center. We received funding to help us bring back the luster of the railroad station showing off many of the architectural details here and we have local talent here that has helped us bring some of the showcasing to light which includes Anthe Frangiatis of Anthe Frangiatis Associates in Marion and Alvin Winant who has put together this wonderful desk that's beautiful. We can't wait to show you. Hello, I'm Anthe Brangiatis. I'm a local architect who has worked with the chamber staff for the interior improvements at the Cape Cod Canal Region Chamber of Commerce Visitor Center here on Main Street in Buzzards Bay. I've incorporated several artisans who I collaborate with to make the center richer and more in keeping with the historic character of the building. Some of those features that you'll hear about are the desk that we're standing in, the historic color palette that surrounds us, and decorative murals done by Kathy Hallam. We can start off with the desk. I'm actually joined with by Alvin Wynett, um, who is the artisan who I had the pleasure of meeting probably 18 months ago. And we have been working together on various projects. Um, so I can tell a little bit about what, how we made this. And so Anthony and I worked together and decided wow, it would be great to have this large area of the Cape to sort of showcase in the visitor center because it could be sort of a great way to show people where they are or where they need to, where they need to get to and just the whole context of this area of the Cape. So we, we really have the full canal cutting down through Bourne from Sandwich, cutting across Buzzards Bay. We have a little bit of Falmouth all the way over to Osterville and then of course we have a, a break here so that um, the uh, information receptionist can come in and, and, and host this desk and hopefully use it as a tool. But it, it really began as uh, we worked together on uh, computer models to get the size right and then the whole process of getting the terrain uh, accurate involves all sorts of uh, navigational maps and earth maps where we come up with data and we make a three-dimensional model and then the model is then cut on a CNC machine much like a 3D printer only a subtractive process and uh, then we after it's roughed out with that we have to come back and compare it to Google Maps to make sure it's accurate and what we found is even though the data was only uh, about six years old we found, found that the shifting sands of the Cape uh, Things were different, especially down in the Silver Beach area. There were certain beach breaks that had been broken through and uh, changed. So that was kind of fun to notice like, wow, even in five years, the Cape is constantly changing. 
and uh, we'll see if it, another 10 years goes by and if Falmouth changes a little bit more, then we can maybe modify it. <laughs> but so it was, a, it was a fun process. This is all uh, built with uh, um, a Baltic birch that comes from Finland and uh, the model is made. We have the uh, topography under the water level uh, accurate and then this jewelry resin is poured to the high tide mark. And uh, if everything works out, uh, it depicts the um, terrain pretty, pretty accurately. Enough to say that, oh, I live there. And, or here's where uh, Route 6 goes over. And uh, you can see the little coves that you may uh, kayak in. We actually had a, uh, we stayed one summer in a, um, a cottage that was near um, Round Pond. And it was fun to actually work with the materials and carve away at a place that you're very familiar with, kayaking, uh, and coming through the channel out through a railroad bridge. So that was, that's kind of the fun thing, and that's kind of why I got into this. I love that, that uh, getting small and really feeling the land. So, um, so that's a little bit about that. And it was important for us, actually. Yeah. It was very important for us to make sure that the towns of Bourne, Sandwich, and Wareham were all represented on the visitor center. Um, the chamber does a good job in representing all of those towns um, in addition to um, the Upper Cape itself. I actually did the same thing. I live there. <laughs> <laughs> right. When I saw it. Yeah. So, so that's, uh, and actually where, you know, where we are right now is, is right there before the railroad bridge goes across and a little bit of mass maritime. So it's kind of fun, especially for people who uh, navigate from the coast coming in, as they get down small, they can actually see the landmarks and the terrain as it would appear, sort of coming up Buzzards Bay, getting ready to go through the canal. Okay. I spoke earlier about the historic color palette, and the desk started as a base to that. So the base of the desk, the product that we used, in addition to selecting the colors that were historically um, appropriate, to match the exterior of the building. The paint that was specified was Ferro on Ball. It's a paint that's manufactured in Dorset, England, and has been used in many historic preservation projects. Um, we have a combination of four colors in this particular palette, and the base of the desk is Charleston Gray. Um, that's a grounding color that we used to match the existing flooring, um, which will be refinished in the visitor center and then it works its way up to the eating room red and book room red for the trim and doors. One of the biggest things that we did was we incorporated a different color in the ceiling, which is something that's not typically done. Um, the Charleston gray actually serves as the ceiling color as well as the desk base color to ground the space in itself. Um, so the colors do accentuate the architectural millwork around the center um, and we have found um, that they work well with the exterior palette of the building as well. So, you know, we invite everybody to come down and to find your place, to actually find on the map where your summer house is, your, your year-round residence or what bays you've sailed or what small estuary, estuaries that you've uh, kayaked in. Uh, the name of my company is Place Unique Forms and we do all sorts of coastal and mountain uh, similar concept, tables, uh, residential and uh, commercial, uh, all around New England. Thank you, Alvin. Yeah. Um, again, I'm Anthony Frangiatis. I have very much enjoyed this collaboration, and I am looking forward to collaborating with the Chamber um, more in the future, as well as with Alvin and other artisans alike. So this was basically a collaborative effort from the board of directors of the chamber, from our um, contractors, Kathy Hallam, uh, Anthony Frangiatis. Those are people that are chamber members that donated their time that's worth thousands of dollars. So it's truly people working together for the betterment. I also want to thank Don Ellis, who was on the Selectman in the Historic Commission, um, and Barry Johnson, who chairs the Community Preservation Committee, because without them, this project wouldn't happen. They look at the pro process, we made our case, and they approved it. So onward and upward, and we plan to open this up sometime in May, and we're going to see a beautiful new center. So come on down and take a look at it.